Now at 5, the first day of winter brings weather chaos, wind, snow, and bitter cold sweeping in. How this will impact you in Utah's most accurate forecasts. Plus, no one is exempt from getting scammed. Scammers taking advantage of the holidays. Why a spirit of giving could lead you to loss. And the tips to steer clear of fraudsters. And a first look at a one-of-a-kind winter wonderland in Midway. We take you live to the ice castles on their earliest opening night. Live, we're there for you. ABC4 News at 5 starts now. Good evening, I'm Emily Flores. And I'm Glenn Mills. Thanks so much for joining us. It is the first night of winter. And the way things are looking, it's going to be a long night ahead in more ways than one. Mixed bag of winter weather moving in, creating whiteout conditions in parts of the state. This is a view in Garden City. You can see the wind sending the snow flying in all directions. These photos from Utah Highway Patrol up Logan Canyon. Troopers, look at this, could not even see a few hundred feet in front of them. Parts of US Highway 89 shut down in the area, then reopened and closed once again after UHP says a number of cars were stuck in the snow. This all in the last of an, uh, about the course of an hour or so. All right, ABC4's Northern Utah, uh, Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner standing by at the mouth of Logan Canyon where we are really seeing some of the worst of the conditions for drivers there. We're going to head out there live for the latest and what you can expect in the driving area. But first, we're going to send things over to Chief Meteorologist Alana Brophy. She's standing by with a detailed breakdown of what we're seeing right now and what's to come. Alana. Well, we've got valley rain and snow in our mountain valleys and the high country. Let's start with our storm tracker radar, which shows you exactly where we're dealing with and where. As we take a closer look, we're going to zoom in and kind of get northern Utah. We know that's where the storm system really is impacting. We're going to move on up just a little bit, and we want to take that close look, give you a pretty good idea. Cache Valley and Logan Canyon starting summit definitely have been dealing with snow. And then we kind of take a look from Ogden all the way down to Provo. Now, we've got valley rain due to our temperatures, but we know the Wasatch dealing with that snow right now, and that's something that we're going to continue. I-80 does have some travel impacts because of the snow, snowy road conditions on the Evanston cameras, so not healthy when you're driving those areas because we've got road slush and road snow, so we've got to be careful. The green you're seeing on the radar in Lehigh, Provo, and Payson, that is rain because of our warmer temperatures, but we still have our winter weather advisory in effect. Okay, let's take a look at our winter alerts right now. Winter storm warning for the mountains. That's that's what you're seeing in pink that holds on until 11 a.m. tomorrow morning. 4 a.m. is that noon time, and we're keeping our eye on the winter weather advisory until 1 a.m. tomorrow. That's for our valleys, but that could be canceled early if we hold on to this rain in the valley. On top of that, we've got wind to talk about, and that wind means business. We've got new warnings coming out of the wind. Live view kind of showing how we're socked in at Alta, and travel impacts are expected for our canyon roads. As we take a look right now, you're able to see Sardine Summit, Parley's Canyon, as well as any roads towards the Uintas. Higher elevation roads, really, really tough with visibility. Now, this is really impacting the northern portion of the state, but the next layer of the storm is the most dangerous one. We've got wind chill values to talk about coming up in my full forecast in just a few moments. Glenn, Emily, back to you. All right, thank you, Alana. Those winds causing concern for drivers in Logan Canyon today. Yes, ABC 4's Northern Utah correspondent Cade Garner joining us live from the canyon. And Cade, what do these conditions mean for the roads there? I mean, like you were saying earlier, there were those photos from Utah Highway Patrol and they couldn't even see a few feet in front of them. I'm at the mouth of the canyon right now and you would have no idea that inside the canyon is a totally different world. Utah Highway Patrol having to close down the road twice today. It's still closed and they tell me they have no idea when it will open back up to the public. Now, Utah Highway Patrol did open part of, of the highway this afternoon to vehicles with four-wheel drive. Now, it wasn't actively snowing when I went through about noon today, but you can see just just how bad road conditions were near Logan Summit. These conditions being brought on thanks to those strong winds Alana was talking about that were blowing snow onto the roads, creating snow drifts and slush. Now, Utah Highway Patrol encourages people to avoid the area altogether if they can as these winter storms continue to push through the area. And not only are road conditions something to look out for in northern Utah right now, but an avalanche warning is in effect as well. Utah Avalanche Center issuing the warning for the Bear River Range in northern Utah and southeastern Idaho. On this map, it's the area in red. So the combination of new snow and high winds just could overload the weak faceted snowpack that we knew we already had. Avalanche forecaster Nikki Champion says those conditions caused avalanches in Logan Canyon today. 
We're seeing natural avalanche activity, primarily at lower elevations, um, some smaller soft slab avalanches, probably of wind drifted snow, either failing on those facets or that weak snow that I talked about from prior to last week. She says there were a few that even made it onto Highway 89. Now the warning is scheduled to expire Thursday, but. Going into the holiday weekend where we know a lot of people have time off work, people might be traveling to backcountry ski, they're really going to want to pay attention to the avalanche forecast. They're really going to want to pay attention to their slope angle. And, you know, recommended is going to be staying off those slopes deeper than 30 degrees or making sure that you're um, off of those slopes that are most suspect. In Logan, Cade Garner, ABC4 News. All right, Kate, thank you. Well, Deer Valley Resort reports a 75 year old skier died on their slopes after collapsing. He was skiing the homeward bound run Tuesday mid morning when he appeared to suffer from some sort of medical episode. Ski patrol responding, taking him down the mountain to an ambulance where we are told he died about an hour after falling. His cause of death has not been released and neither has his identity. A massive stride for Utah lawmakers behind a bill to study the shrinking Great Salt Lake. That bill introduced by Senator Mitt Romney and Representative Blake Moore works to address drought conditions of Utah's lakes and other lakes in the Great Basin area. The Senate voting Monday night to push that bill through Congress after the House approved it with a few amendments. Now it's up to President Joe Biden to decide whether the federal government will set aside $5 million every year from 2023 to 2028 for the study of these lakes. A seriously banged up road in Tooele County will get a $6 million makeover. It's all part of a grant program for rural transportation projects. This money funding the import improvement of the Ipapa Road stretching 35 miles from the Utah Nevada border down to Juab County. The road was last paved almost 50 years ago with only small fixes in between. This in hopes of cutting down on the number of deadly accidents on rural neglected roads and improving access. And the Better Business Bureau of Utah is warning people about scams this holiday season. The BBB is saying scammers take advantage of this time of year. That's because Utahns, of course, spending millions of dollars on the holiday and are typically more generous. Texting and email scams are the most popular and unfortunately successful ways for fraudsters to steal. Now, the BBB is saying never give out any personal information to people you don't know. Don't click on links you do not recognize and reach out to law enforcement if you need to. Adding anyone can fall victim. Wherever there is a person who puts money into the marketplace, there's a scammer there with specific, pointed, absolutely perfected uh, methods of getting you to give them your money. Now, if you do end up getting scammed, call your credit card company immediately. They'll try their best to resolve the issue. But most of the time, once the money is gone, it's gone, so it's best to be overly cautious, especially this time of year. Another popular seasonal scam taking advantage of animal lovers looking to have a furry fur baby pop up under the tree. The BBB says 80% of sponsored pet ads may be fake. Fraudsters leaving the average victim $1,000 poorer and puppyless. But scams aside, there are a few things you should know about before getting a pet for the holidays. Best Friends Utah says Owners need to know exactly what they're getting into. They don't want to see these pets end up in their shelters months down the line, especially with shelters across the state overwhelmed and overcrowded. Please be aware that they do live a long time. They do cost money to care for, and you want to get one that's the best match for your family and your lifestyle, so do some homework. If you have done the research and you are ready to make that fur furry friend a member of your family, Best Friends Utah says the best way to find a new pet is to adopt, especially with a percent, 10 percent increase in dogs in shelters. Well, when Christmas morning comes, celebrators get to bask in the gift of giving. But when the wrapping paper clears, you're often left with a massive pile of trash you might not know what to do with. Until now, that is. Mark I'm Miller Subaru giving you another way to get that pile of paper out of sight and keep it out of the landfills as well. They're asking community members to drop their holiday trash off at two locations where they will recycle your wrapping paper, ribbons, bows, tissue paper, and party supplies. What most people don't know is that you can't recycle wrapping paper. So if you throw wrapping paper into your recycling bin, Salt Lake County is just gonna pull it back out and throw it away. And so what we do is we're able to take it to a place called TerraCycle. Miller says TerraCycle specializes in hard to recycle waste and turns wrapping paper into usable items, similar to the benches 
in their Subaru locations. You can turn your Christmas trash into treasure by bringing it to Mark Miller Subaru locations in either Sandy or Salt Lake City the week after Christmas. Love that idea. Okay, still ahead. Do not miss the earliest opening day in its history. Stick around for a first, first look at the finished ice castles in Midway. And there's that live look at Cache Valley, the Utah State University campus, where they've seen rain in the valleys and plenty of snow in elevated areas. We are tracking this storm system and the layers it brings as we roll through our holiday week in Utah's most accurate forecast.